Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Joseph Alvernaz. I am the Vice President of Government Affairs for the City of Hope, as well as a hematologist oncologist and the MC for today's event. We welcome all of our virtual attendees and are glad to welcome our speakers today on this very important occasion. Our first speaker this morning is Mr. Robert Stone, President and CEO of City of Hope. Welcome, Robert. Thank you, Joe. Good morning, everyone. As Dr. Alvern has said, my name is Robert Stone, and I'm the president and CEO of City of Hope. And I'm honored to be with you today at this historic moment for Californians, and I thank you for joining us to celebrate the passage of Cancer Patients' Bill of Rights by the California State Legislature is the first of its kind for California and in the nation. The resolution calls for six rights that every cancer patient in California should expect from the moment of diagnosis through their cancer journey. Thanks to the incredible medical breakthroughs, a cancer diagnosis is no longer a death sentence. These advances have brought a great deal of hope, hope for better treatments, hope for better outcomes, hope for cures, but too many Californians cannot access the hope provided by these life-saving treatments due to a one-size-fits-all policies that erect barriers to the cancer care that could save their life. This Bill of Rights is an essential first step in our work together to address the barriers to access that the current system burdens patients with, especially for underserved members of our community. The resolution outlines six important rights that every cancer patient in California should be able to expect from the moment of diagnosis. These include a full understanding of diagnosis and treatment options in culturally appropriate and understandable language, timely access to cancer subspecialists, pain management and other services to support their health, and access to clinical trials and innovative treatments. The overwhelming support for this resolution means that we must continue our work to save more lives and ensure access to the right care for each cancer patient. This includes access to promising new innovations, experts specializing in various cancer types, and advances in personalized precision cancer treatments. You know, at City of Hope, we're proud to be a leader in both cancer care innovation and in advocating for access to potentially life-saving care for patients. And we recognize that cancer care is different. For patients, the best chance of a cure is the first chance of a cure. Cancer survival uniquely relies on the accuracy of initial diagnosis, choice of therapy, and access to appropriate clinical trials. We're deeply grateful to the many supporters in the California Senate and Assembly and to the members of this coalition who have driven this resolution to passage on behalf of cancer patients throughout the state. With that, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Senator Susan Rubio. We're deeply grateful to Senator Rubio for championing this Bill of Rights on behalf of cancer patients throughout the state of California. Senator Rubio, would you please join us? Thank you and good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you for that introduction. I'm just honored to be partnering with City of Hope. That's been such a, a great place to visit. It happens to be in my backyard and I've toured many times and I just wanna thank all the doctors and researchers and everyone that's there to help. I'm really honored to be able to carry this resolution on behalf of not only City of Hope, but all the patients out there. Uh, most importantly, I wanna thank all the cancer patients and cancer survivors, because I know that you know, we do it because of your strength, your courage. And I don't know anyone that's not uh, connected in one way or the other to someone that's struggling with cancer. I have uh, several family members as well as my grandfather who passed from cancer. And it's so important that we really recognize how important it is that we pass the Cancer Patients Bill of Rights. Uh, it's a disease that will continue to invade our communities. And we wanna make sure that we do find that cure. And just like the, uh, Mr. Um, Robert just mentioned, uh, the first chance of a cure is that the first chance of a cure is not a revolutionary, I'm sorry, not a revolutionary statement, but it's something that is important. And we need to recognize that it is just basic rights of patients to, to have access, especially 
in those disadvantaged communities. Uh, and a lot of the times I know personally families that don't try to get help, they don't understand it. It's such a foreign concept. And to ensure that the care is done in a culturally competent manner, I think it's important. Uh, cancer patients have a right to transparent and timely access. And so with everyone working together, I know that we can get there. I wanna take a moment to also thank my colleagues who have joined us co-authors in particular, my, my colleague here, a family member, uh, Mike Gibson. I just wanna say, um, thank you so much. I know that through this process, you've just shared that you have a personal connection and story. And I'm just so thankful that you're willing to share it publicly to, to really encourage you know, others to, to come to the table, not only with research, with help, with resources, but, but to know that they're not alone, that we also personally are impacted by, by cancer and that we understand. And, and here in California, we're just doing amazing work. So right now I'm just honored that we were able to pass it in the assembly, the Cancer Patient Bill of Rights. And, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, my colleague, Mike Gibson, assembly member, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Senator Rubio. Uh, good morning to each and every one of you. Once again, let me say thank you to uh, Senator Rubio. I did say thank you. Let me say it again. Thank you very much. My mom always said, baby, if anybody does anything for you, you simply say thank you. So I want to say thank you for gathering us all together. I am Mike Gibson. I represent the 64th State Assembly District. Those are areas of Watts, Willowbrook, where I was born and raised, Compton, Carson, Wilmington, North Long Beach, Linwood, Gardena, and also Torrance. I, again, am elated to be um, co-principal um, of, of SCR 11, the Cancer Patient Bill of Rights, almost 1.9 million. New cancer cases are expected to be diagnosed in 2000 and 21, and approximately 608, 570,000 Americans are expected to lose their lives due to cancer in 2021. I want that to seek in for a moment because those are real lives, those are real people, those are real loved ones um, in the United States of America. Um, my sister, my sister right under me was born, Rosie Gibson, She's part of the 1.9 million people who've been diagnosed with cancer. My sister, I refuse to allow her to die by this deadly disease. That's my personal story. I refuse. She told all of us. I remember that phone call, uh, uh, Robert, that I received uh, with all of my sisters telling us, that she's been diagnosed with cancer and it's, it's in the stage four. Again, my stomach dropped. Someone punched me in the stomach, Liz. I couldn't get my breath because of that. I refuse to lose her. I'm going to do, and every, we're going to do everything that we can to, to make sure uh, that she beat this and she is part of the, you know, those cancer survivors um, that will tell their story and help others to get over that situation. So this is absolutely real. Some of California's most vulnerable and disadvantaged um, cancer patients don't have equal access to cutting edge treatments and clinical trials. Regrettably, coverage does not guarantee that a cancer patient is able to, uh, to access expert care, and that's wrong. This resolution includes it's uh, six important rights that every cancer patient in California should expect uh, once they receive a diagnosis. It is our obligation, underscore it is our obligation to ensure that regardless of your color of your skin, regardless of who your mama and daddy is, your zip codes, your social uh, uh, economic status, every person has an equal chance to beat this disease that impacts so many in our communities and so many loved ones that we are attached to. I am proud, again, to be the, uh, the principal co of this great measure. I, have, I will continue to dedicate my energy, my space, uh, my voice, 
my breath in order to making sure that this becomes a reality in the state of California. And I'm happy to join with each and every one of you once again. Thank you, uh, Senator Rubio, for having a vision to bring us all together because without a vision, the people perish. And I'm grateful that the state legislature, the state assembly yesterday passed this measure. Thank you very much. Assembly member Gibson, thank you so much for your absolutely extraordinary con comments. And Senator Rubio, Thank you for your extraordinary lead leadership throughout this process. Our next speaker, who is a national patient speaker for City of Hope and chair of the board for Breast Cancer Solutions, will share her story of hope, perseverance, and transcendence. Welcome, Coma McDowell. I'm so honored to be here today. And Assembly Member Gibson, you have just pumped me up over here. I am a 16 year triple negative inflammatory breast cancer survivor who was told I would only survive two years. I was stage four, I've been there. I've had to deliver the news to my sister, to my mother. And at the time I was engaged and had to tell my fiance, you didn't sign up for this. In my case, this bill would have made the difference for me in my staging, I truly believe, because I had to fight for seven months, seven months to be heard. And my issue that I was challenged with was my age. I was too young to have breast cancer. And as a result, for seven months, I was told there was nothing was wrong with me. Nothing was wrong. It was my hormones. It's okay. Come back in six months. I wouldn't have lived six months. By the time I convinced my primary care doctor and the surgeon to even just look, to remove whatever was not wrong with me, by the time they did that, it was stage four. I found myself in a position where what would have happened had you at least taken into consideration something is wrong? What would have happened had you at least taken into consideration, maybe we need to talk to someone who may be more familiar with. In, in my case, that didn't happen, but thankfully I knew about City of Hope and I went to City of Hope scared like everyone else. And that's where they discovered that I had two rare forms of breast cancer, two year survival rate with no children. At the age of 29, this is what I was wrestling with. Fortunately for me, I am now 16, 16 years out. That man who asked me to marry him stayed right by my side through the whole thing. We will be celebrating 16 years of marriage. And by the grace of God, we have a son who started middle school on Monday who is 12 years old. Because of the care that I received at City of Hope, they were very intentional this bill speaks to the importance of a specialist. There was an inflammatory breast cancer specialist there able to assist me. And in 2005, he was one of two specialists in the country. What are the odds of that? So this bill means so much to me as one who's been able to survive it. And for those who have gone on and fought as hard as they could, I represent, I carry a torch for them. And so I'm with you, Senator Rubio. I'm with you, Assembly Member Gibson. Let's do this. Let's spread this, the impact that this could have in our state, in our country, and in the world. Thank you so much for supporting this bill. Koma, thank you for sharing your absolutely extraordinary and inspiring story. What, what amazing stories today. Our next speaker today is the president and CEO of California Chronic Care Coalition. We'd like to welcome Elizabeth Helms to this conversation. Thank you so much and, and what an emotional discussion and, and I'm right there with you and, and uh, wanna thank Senator Rubio and Assembly Member Gibson for, and especially City of Hope for your unwavering efforts on behalf of all cancer patients. The California Chronic Care Coalition is really proud to be a partner of the Cancer Patient Bill of Rights. And even more today as we're talking about personal stories 
if I can get through this, because this is very close to me, that just this morning, we lost a very close and dear family member to cancer. So this is so important. And I thank you all for all this hard work in making this happen. The Cancer Patient Bill of Rights raises critical awareness about the adverse patient impact caused by restricted access to specialized care and innovation. On behalf of the four C's, our alliance of nonprofit organizations, including patient advocates, physicians, providers, consumers, and other stakeholders, we commend our California policymakers for this very important resolution. It will save lives and standing up for cancer patients doing the right thing. So thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we will do our best to ensure everybody gets the message and that they know that this res resolution exists and that there's help for them. Thank you so much. Elizabeth, thank you so much for your heartfelt comments and support. Our final speaker today is the State Legislative Director for California at the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. Please welcome Autumn Ogden Smith. Good morning and thank you all. I'm Autumn Ogden Smith with the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. And we're so grateful and so proud to partner with Senator Rubio and City of Hope in pushing forward the Cancer Patients Bill of Rights um, and getting it through the legislature. A cancer diagnosis does not have to mean a death sentence, but it often does for minorities and people with disadvantaged backgrounds. Patients who lack access to resources are often placed on inefficient care plans that end up doing more harm than good. The Cancer Patients Bill of Rights stands as a bold statement of what every cancer patient um, deserves a full understanding of treatment options and culturally appropriate and understandable language, timely access to subspecialists, and access to clinical trials and innovative treatments. The passage of SCR 11 brings us a step closer in guaranteeing meaningful and timely access that cancer patients throughout the state need. Thank you so much. Autumn, thank you so much for your words and for your support throughout this process. I'd like to turn the microphone back to City of Hope President and CEO, Mr. Stone. Well, I wanna conclude by saying thank you to all of you joining us today to celebrate, as I said, this historic moment for Californians. Like you, I've, I've heard and been moved by all of the stories today. I've heard, as you have heard, how cancer impacts patients and their families. We've heard how we need to keep our focus and our energy in this fight. Assemblymember Gibson, you said earlier that we should say thank you, and we should say thank you again. And I want to say thank you to all of you joining us in this sacred fight. I'm proud to be here with Senator Rubio and Assemblymember Gibson. You've both played a vital role in championing the Cancer Patients Bill of Rights on behalf of City of Hope. And put simply, I'm convinced that this Bill of Rights will save lives. And I promise you that every time a life is saved, every time a family is made whole, and every time we're able to have hope push out despair, you'll own a piece of that success. I always also want to thank my friend Kamag McDowell for sharing her inspiring stories and giving us a clear picture of what this Bill of Rights means for people, people and their families. I'd also like to thank Autumn Ogden Smith and Elizabeth Helms and our colleagues at the American Cancer Society, Cancer Action Network, and the California Chronic Care Coalition for their work and commitment every day to improve access to care everywhere. And finally, I wanna thank all of you for joining us today. While we could not be together in person, I hope you feel the passion the excitement, the commitment, and most importantly, the hope for the future, not only for California, but for those joining us from around the country. We hope this moment inspires meaningful conversations beyond California. It will make a difference. Thank you all again for joining us. And again, we want to thank everyone in attendance today for sharing in the celebration of the Cancer Patient Bill of Rights for our great state of California. We at City of Hope recognize that this is just a first step in ensuring that all cancer patients receive the proper specialized treatment that they're entitled and really necessarily 
have to receive in our state. To learn more, to support and join this coalition, please come and see us at our website, www.cancercarediff.org. That's www.cancercarediff.org. Thank you again.